I've been a fan of the Atelier franchise for a couple years now, and confusing pronunciation aside, it's hard to find a set of games as lighthearted and enjoyable as these while still providing countless hours of intricate RPG fun. Atelier Aisha Plus was my first game in the series, and helped me get through a really rough patch in my life. And since then, I've tried to support the series to the best of my ability. Atelier usually comes out in trilogies, and the last three years have been dedicated to the Mysterious trilogy. Personally, I thought the first two games in it, Atelier Sophie and Atelier Fearis, were entertaining, but they failed to hook me when they released. That might have had something to do with Evita ports leaving much to be desired, combined with the fact that I'd take portable gaming over traditional console or PC gaming any day of the week. Look, I can't help it, I am a lazy individual who loves playing games in bed, sue me. Anyway, Atelier Lydian Sowell, Alchemist of the Mysterious Paintings, the final game in this particular trilogy, released back in late March, and I'll be completely honest and say that this entry being the first to release on the Nintendo Switch was a huge factor in getting me excited to return to the world of Atelier. With that in mind, my review is coming from the perspective of someone who not only wanted to see how it works as a standalone game, but also how the Switch port holds up. To give you a little tease, despite its shortcomings, Lydian Sowell really makes me regret not giving this trilogy my attention much, much sooner. Also, yeah, I know this review is very late, but hey, 50 hour RPGs don't play themselves. Set eight years after Atelier Sophie and four years after Atelier Fearis, this game stars twins Liddy and Suel Marlin. The two sisters are like night and day, with Liddy being quiet and shy, while Sue is hyper and rowdy. From the start, the two run an atelier in the kingdom's capital with their deadbeat artistic father after their mother passed away years before. To quickly clarify what an atelier is within the context of the series, it's essentially just an alchemy workshop. Liddy and Sue live a relatively normal life, but unfortunately their father spends most of their money on art supplies. Considering business at the atelier wasn't great to begin with, that puts the twins in a less than ideal situation thing is. All of this changes when an accidental trip into a magical painting gives them the encouragement they need to turn their lives around and become the best alchemist in the kingdom. It's from there that Lydia and Sue's delightful journey to the top begins. While the story seems a bit simplistic on paper, I had a blast with it. Plot has never really been the focus of Atelier games, mainly because character interactions and gameplay is where they truly shine. If you're looking for a feel-good, character-driven narrative that knows how to balance the touching, wholesome, cute, silly, and comedic moments pretty well, this might be the game for you. Also, what's great is that Lydian Swell structures its plot in a way that anyone new to the series can jump right in, while still rewarding fans who have stuck with this trilogy since Sophie. I enjoy how the girl's lack of life experience makes any exposition feel justified, and even helps ease new players into the world. While you'll definitely get more out of it if you've played the other games, I was pleasantly surprised that this final game in the trilogy ended up being one of the most approachable Atelier games to date. I'm gonna be real with you, it might just be the fact that the twins are that damn lovable. They're adorable, play off each other well, and may just be the sweetest Atelier duo since Eska and Lodgy. They share the role of protagonist, so you can switch around who you control whenever you're at their house. I could keep talking about them for hours, but for the sake of your attention, let's talk about gameplay. Lydian Swell uses a simple but highly addictive gameplay loop. After the kind of slow opening, each chapter plays out as followed. Cute shenanigans happen with the twins. A wide variety of side quests are given and can be completed to raise reputation. Vast areas are explored where enemies can be fought and materials gathered. Relevant story details are sprinkled through a variety of events. And finally, an alchemy ranking exam is administered to the twins. It's not always in that order, but that's the simplest way I could describe it. As you make your way up the alchemist ranks, you'll be given a variety of tasks, unlock new areas and paintings to explore, and meet a colorful cast of characters, returning and new. While doing this, the game has an interesting time and weather system running behind the scenes. Time is always progressing, and the environment subtly changes depending on the day, time, and forecast. Now before you get stressed out about time management, I promise it's a lot more lenient than you think. The only aspects of the game that are genuinely time sensitive are the optional side quest and free time events. Free time events are incredibly cute, and boy does it do a lot to flesh out the main cast. This is actually where you get a large chunk of characterization, and these little sections might be my favorite part of the game. Side quests on the other hand are important if you don't want to be broke, and can even help boost your alchemy repertoire. If this video is somehow your first experience with this franchise, I bet you still have one question for me. What the hell do you mean by alchemy? Well, alchemy is exactly what you might think. 
taking items in your inventory, throwing them in a cauldron, experimenting with a bit of cutesy magic, until... poof! New item. Of course, it's a lot more complex than just that. So much, in fact, that it would take about an hour or two to explain the intricacies of how it all works. Everything in this game revolves around alchemy, and once you get used to this incredibly rewarding system, you'll start to see what makes these games so addicting. The game's lax approach to its time limit rewards you for exploration and experimentation, which gives you time to mess with the system as much as you want. New features and methods to synthesize items trickle through as you advance the plot always keeping the alchemy mechanic fresh. And don't misunderstand, this isn't just some magical harvest moon knockoff. Far from it, actually. When you aren't gathering ingredients, going on side quests, or watching Fierce literally be the cutest character ever conceived in all of fiction. Come on, look at her. At least top five. You're participating in fast, turn-based combat. Oh, and I'd like to give Mr. Roger Mel the Father of the Year award for sending his teenage daughter out into the wilderness with two revolvers. You're doing great, Roger. Wife would be proud. When out exploring, if you run into or hit any of the monsters on the field, combat starts. Your team consists of six slots, one for each party member. Three of these function as active members in battle, and the other three serve as support. Each support character has a set of skills that activate depending on what action you pick for their designated partner. This could be anything from follow-up attacks to support skills, and it can get pretty in-depth as you expand your skill set and level up. At a certain point in the story, you can even unlock the ability to use alchemy in battle. <laughs> If you thought this was just going to be some cookie-cutter anime game, shame on you. Welcome to System City. Population, the rest of us willingly stuck in Atelier Hell. We recommend you grab a blanket and some cocoa, because you're going to be in this for the long haul. Your party composition can be pretty flexible and mostly depends on how you prefer to approach combat. But it's a smart idea to check up on the requirements to activate someone's support skills and partner them up accordingly. However, my one real complaint with this battle system is tied to the rate in which you obtain new party members. In other words, pacing. It's a good thing the twins are so cute because it really takes a while for things to get going. I spent roughly 5 hours in the beginning of the game with just Lydia and Sue, and it takes roughly 25 hours to finally get the whole cast together. Sure, it makes sense in the context of the narrative, but it kind of hurts the game from a gameplay perspective. However, I'd say it was worth it in the end, because Sophie and Ferris are excellent additions to the team, and their inclusion to the cast will make any fan's heart flutter. Outside of combat, I feel it's worth mentioning that Lydian Swell drops the open-world exploration of Ferris, and returns the smaller scale of Atelier Sophie. When leaving town, you simply choose where you want to go from a list of locations and fast travel there. It definitely works for Lydian Swell, but I think I would have liked if it had more of a combination of the design philosophies found in Sophie and Ferris. Now, the game makes up for this shortcoming in the painting worlds, which add much needed variety to playable locations. Despite enjoying these areas, this is actually where my gripes with the game's design begin to pop up. Their paintings primarily serve as dungeons, but they often feel either too small or way too long, filled with padding. You'll hit roadblocks more often than not, forcing you to fast travel back to the Atelier in order to synthesize the item required to proceed. For whatever reason, there aren't checkpoints in the painting worlds, so back to the beginning of the dungeon you go every time your pouch gets full or you need to restock on items. It's not always an issue, since it doesn't take too long to run through most of these areas, but it still ended up padding out my playtime quite a bit. At least these areas all look nice and feature fun bosses. So at the very worst, the painting worlds are a mixed bag. Now, for you Switch owners out there, you probably want to know how the port holds up. I'll be brief on this in case you aren't planning to pick it up on this console, but all things considered, it's a fine port. It has some issues, but nothing too egregious. The game is unfortunately only 720p portable and docked, but succeeds at hitting 30fps, for the most part. I wish it at least tried to target a higher resolution while docked, and it seems like a bit more work could have been put into the overall performance, but it still looks and runs a lot better than the Vita ports of Sophie and Ferris. The game isn't too graphically intensive or anything, so maybe some more time in the oven could have done it some good. There was also a weird glitch where the game counted time with the Switch in sleep mode towards playtime. This isn't really a big deal at all, but I thought it was funny how it made my recorded playtime surpass 600 hours. Trust me, that's the, um, that's the port. <laughs> Honest, honestly. Still, despite looking better on other systems, if you're looking to play an Atelier game on the go, I'd say this is probably your best bet. Luckily, the lower resolution doesn't really hurt the presentation, as this game's aesthetic is just that charming. The models are cute and well-made, the color palette is beautiful, and the environments are eye-catching. There's a simple yet lovely UI as well, which has unique touches to it like the girl's journal getting wet when you pause during a rainstorm. 
Like with all Atelier games, I must remind you that these are budget titles released yearly. If you're a fan, then you'll be used to this already, but I think it's important to mention. Animation quality can be a little inconsistent. Animations during combat look great, whereas certain animations outside of it can be a bit stiff. This never affects gameplay, though, so it's just a nitpick, really. All in all, the game's nice on the eyes, and I can't wait to see the next iteration of the Atelier engine, given that these games' visuals improve with each entry. I'll be honest, I trust my eyes far more than my ears, and because of that, I can break down visuals and read too much into them in classic pretentious fashion. When it comes to audio design, I always struggle to adequately convey my thoughts more elegantly than just, it's good, or it's not very good. So bear with me here. The OST is impressive overall, and many tracks do a great job riding the line between upbeat and mysterious. One detail that I really appreciated is that there's a Liddy version and a Sue version of a lot of the tracks. They're always completely different from each other, with each version matching the personality of its respective twin. Even without being musically inclined, it's obvious that no expense was spared when it comes to the OST, and I love that. One thing that does stand out, however, is the fact that this is the first Atelier game in years to not receive a dub. While this did disappoint me at first, I'm happy to say that it never really hurt my enjoyment. All I can do is hope that the next game brings back dual audio. Atelier Lydian Swell is undoubtedly a fun but flawed game, especially on the Switch. However, despite its issues, I can't deny just how charming it is, and you'll find it difficult to play without having a big dumb grin on your face. Yeah, there are some questionable design decisions, and it's clear that the budget could have been allotted better, but this is still a mechanically deep and solid RPG. I have some minor gripes with the Switch release, but it's a fine port and I had fun with this new way to play the Atelier games on a portable console. It's a great send-off for the Mysterious trilogy, while still managing to appeal to people who have never touched an Atelier game in their life. It was a delight to spend my long playtime with such a well-written and endearing cast, and I'm glad the game still fit in some really nice character development for the new and returning characters. Also, it's probably one of the more wholesome anime games on the market, and I think that's really cool in its own right. I'm still unwavering in my opinion that Atelier Eska and Logi is the best title in the series, but this is definitely up there. It revitalized my adoration for this franchise, and I'm excited to see where they go next. If you want an addicting RPG full to the brim with content, then you should really give this game a shot. I give Atelier Lydian Suell a B-. The video is now over, so you know what that means, time to thank some people. Right off the bat, huge thanks to Koei Tecmo for giving me a chance and providing me a review copy of this game. I appreciate your patience and I hope to work with you guys again in the future. And then next up is big thanks to my script editor, Supreme Zerker. He is an incredibly wonderful guy. Please go follow him on Twitter. There's really not that much else to say here. If you like this review, maybe consider subscribing and checking out some of my other stuff. And outside of that, if you want more of me, follow me on Twitch and Twitter at DrCullenPhD. Yakuza 6, Psychedelica of the Black Butterfly, and Persona Dancing are still coming, but I have something new to announce. Because I love overworking myself, I put in a late review quest to cover East 8, Lacrimosa of Donna on Nintendo Switch. And I got in. For those of you who don't know this about me, I am a huge Falcom fan, so this opportunity is pretty crazy. That's really all I can say about that right now, expect a review after launch. That about does it, I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day. To celebrate the release of this video I've been working on for three months, I'm going to go take four cold showers in a row. Bye bye.